Birds are our most familiar aspect of experiencing nature. In the Red River Valley of North Dakota, a deep, rich topsoil formed from the prairie plants that had grown there for thousands of years. But today, it is estimated that 95 to 99 percent of the original tall grass prairie has been converted to agricultural cropland. With the loss of grassland fields, the only habitat remaining for grassland species is at best narrow strips of grass along section lines and drainage ditches. The western meadowlark, the state bird of North Dakota, with its requirement for five or more acres of grassland, cannot successfully nest in such a narrow strip. There can be no doubt that the loss of meadowlarks in North Dakota is due to a loss of grassland habitat. How about the one on top? That's it, right there. You know what that is? In the yellow? Yeah. No, that's a gross. You have no idea. <laughs> what the heck is that? There's probably a couple of them down in those flowers because they like those. Well, they might be. No, no, they're gone. About 20 years ago, our office cooperated with an Eagle Scout on their Eagle Scout project to build an interpretive trail around a wetland just east of Bismarck. And so we had about 50 volunteers, but we lined up an opening speaker, and that was former Governor Art Link. So he got everybody close together and he said, before I say anything, I want everybody to pause for a moment and I will begin my remarks after we hear the first metal art song. And everybody kind of looked at each other and paused for about five seconds. And sure enough, about 100 feet down the parking lot, a metal arc sounded off on top of a fence post, and Art got this big smile on his face, and it stuck with me 20 years later because he knew the value of a symbol like a metal arc, and he got people to rally around it. When I was growing up, the metal arc was certainly the, uh, the first sign of spring, and when, when you heard the metal arcs, you knew that uh, we were gonna have spring again for the year. And my folks weren't really bird people, but they were uh, always interested in, in uh, listening for the metal art. The Czechoslovakian words that they used to mimic the, the uh, metal art song was Pepik Stracioklajiva, <laughs> which, and I'm, I'm recalling this from memory. It sounds uh, like a metal art. Yeah, and it was Johnny lost his hammer, is what it meant. Something like that, I don't know. Every fall, I'm out in the prairie uh, hunting other activities and I always mark on my calendar the last metal arc of the season and usually it's around the, somewhere between the 15th and 20th of October and I believe it's the uh, immature males that are just learning to sing, they're practicing, they know this is going to be an important part of their life come the following spring and so every fall. I'm listening and I'll make notes on my calendar and keep pushing it back until, the, until there are no more. Our son came to visit us from Japan. He's been living in Japan for a couple of years. And he brought his girlfriend with him. So we took him out to the Badlands. We took a family trip out there. We were walking along one of those little trails out in Teddy Roosevelt National Park. And we heard a, uh, a meadowlark sing. And so I turned to Raina, and I said, that's a meadowlark. She said, how do you know? I said, by the song. The song is very distinctive. Um, she grew up in Osaka, and they don't get many birds in Osaka. I think she was impressed that I knew what the bird was by the song, and I felt like I was a real naturalist. <laughs> you know, it's like, so it was a good, it was one of those little introductory moments to North Dakota from somebody from really far away. And somebody who is, she's now going to be a daughter-in-law, so she's got to know, she's got to know about that stuff. <laughs> in the early 2000s, it, it became apparent that the wind industry was going to move in into North and South Dakota. The best areas in the two states where, wind, where it was the windiest were primarily 
rugged, have a very rugged topography, and so they still contain large areas of native grassland because they're too rugged to plow. Well, if industrial-sized wind facilities move into these last remaining large swaths of native prairie, how is that going to affect wildlife for the western meadowlark? What we found is that the species did show avoidance at one of three wind facilities. That was a, a rather unusual finding that it didn't show avoidance at all three wind facilities. So we had to scratch our heads and do some thinking and we thought, well, maybe we need to look at the landscape in which these wind facilities are embedded. So I undertook an analysis that looked at the percent of cropland that was surrounding each of these wind facilities, the density of roads, prairie trails, or uh, minimum maintenance roads, township gravel roads, or major highways. We also looked at number of turbines and other tall structures, as well as structures such as buildings. And once I ran that analysis, I, I realized that the South Dakota Wind Energy Center was the one facility that was located in an area with a lot of human disturbance. Uh, and the other two facilities, especially Axionis Tatanka, was in a landscape that was primarily just grassland. The sad thing about losing prairie is you lose, we lose our natural heritage. We, we lose what really made this valley great in the first place. Well, what makes it great now is this productive cropland. But that goes back to the prairie that existed here that built up the deep soils that is now ideal for growing a variety of crops. We've looked at all the wildlife in the state, all the birds, reptiles and amphibians, mammals, trying to determine which species might be declining, uh, species that are unique to the state. And the meadowlark was recently added to our state species of conservation priority list. That was big news and I, I think it was, it was big news because a state added their state bird to the, the list of species of conservation concern. I, I think it was an eye-opener for North Dakota. I believe that other states, if they started looking at their trend data, if they have grassland birds as a state bird, they'll notice the same thing. This is our, our, our monthly magazine, North Dakota Outdoors. We've actually added a few more to the list since this was published. When you say something like Western Meadowlark, everybody knows what that is. And some people know it's our state bird, some people don't. It doesn't matter, you know, it's a bird that, you know, just about everybody is, has seen somewhere at some point in their life in North Dakota. 20 years from now, that might not be the case, where a lot of people now have never seen our state bird just because it's not there anymore. It's not really. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, whiplash. Whiplash is... A, obviously a sudden reversal of directions of where we were to going someplace else. You know, like getting your head snapped back or whatever. And, you know, that's where we're at and people don't realize it yet. The western meadowlark is a, is a species that a lot of private landowners can identify. They, they, they know what that species looks like. You know, they knew what all these birds were because they grew up living on the land, on a farmland pasture and you know they don't see them anymore. We have been looking at some of that. We have long-term data that we can we can also compare it to some of the other national um, trends that people are noticing from other long-term population surveys such as the North American Breeding Bird Survey. Given that we've been working in some of these fields for 25 years we have very strong evidence that these birds are actually disappearing from from these fields. I've had other people call and you know they we're wondering what happened to the meadowlarks, and the more you talk to them, while well, they tore their pasture up and took all the fence posts away. And there's things people could do. We put the barbed wire fence on our grassland bird poster. Barbed wire kind of has that negative connotation, and putting out a couple of perches, because they love to perch on fence posts and fences, and just little things like that will help. Within the heart of the Red River Valley, significant grasslands still exist, places where the western meadowlark can still be heard. In eastern Grand Forks County, approximately 70,000 acres of semi-contiguous grassland extend northward along the drainage of the Forest River. Without grass, there will be no grassland birds. One of the really important 
processes that happen on a typical tall grass prairie is in burning. Uh, we still don't know exactly the historical frequency of it. it seems to have maybe been around uh, every three to five years was a typical uh, opportunity for the grassland to become uh, naturally burned. Prescribed fire helps regenerate native cover that is, might have been absent or um, stunted by non-native cover. Also, uh, a lot of birds nest out in here, and when it gets so thick and matted that uh, their nests are almost under layers and, of tall grass. And like you were talking about the western meadowlark, I mean, I'm from Montana, that's our state bird, so it's kind of cool to see the wildlife, how the fire impacts wildlife, birds. I wish I brought a bird book. Does it have a white head? Yeah. Let me, let me pick up an eye. Oh, that's a young metal lark. Really? Yep. How can you tell? It's got that eye, the black eye patch and the three stripes of white down the head. It's a young of the year metal lark. There's, that's the, the hope for the future right there, that bird. And right behind it is Native Prairie. <laughs> you got one. You got one. Oh, there it goes. We assume that this is the way it's always been when it never was this way before. We don't have a good discussion and it would certainly make a lot of sense to, uh, to have those discussions. You don't have to agree with them, but to listen to what people have to say and think about what they have to say. The meadowlark has been here a lot longer than we have, and before we were influencing the fire behavior on the landscape, the fires burned through these prairies, and the meadowlark is still here. Some of those changes are perfectly understandable. They chalk it up to progress, and one man's progress is quite different than another's. As we move forward, a valued tradition for many North Dakotans, that, while still there, is harder and harder to come by. Traditions do change through time, and so change isn't necessarily a bad thing in itself either. Change can be good, change can be bad, change can be incremental, it can be fast. Hopefully 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now, we might look on, on this day and many other days like this and realize there were a lot of uh, small steps like this, uh, but put together they were very, they were very significant. These scientists have been watching grasslands disappear for decades and been unable to staunch that loss because we operate in numbers and in our head and we aren't getting to people's hearts and saying, doesn't this feel wrong to you? How do you stay positive? How do you keep doing what you're doing? Because we can't do otherwise. We can't just roll up on the floor in a fetal position and say it's all gone and going. We have to keep trying to stem the tide and reverse it or fix it or nobody else will. What I think we should not ever do is to overdo it to the point where we lose everything. You know, I just, we'll be all the poorer for it. We'll be really poor for losing all that. Former North Dakota Governor Art Link once wrote, we do not want to halt progress. No, we simply want to ensure the most efficient and environmentally sound method of utilizing our natural resources. And when we are through with that, and the landscape is quiet again, let those who follow and repopulate the land be able to say, our grandparents did their job well. The land is as good, and in some cases, better than before.
the meadow larks had been on the breeding grounds all summer long. Uh, they were leaving us and uh, just appreciative that they had spent the summer with us. <laughs> That's great. Yeah.